morning. It's uh, just after six o'clock. I'm on my way now to Brands Hatch for a track day, but this track day is a bit different because we're gonna be on the full Grand Prix circuit, which is a rare opportunity at Brands Hatch. Most of the people that do track days will know that generally it's only the Indy circuit. It's quite expensive, 550 odd pound without a garage. And it's gonna be busy because when we booked it months ago, there were no garages available. So I suspect this is gonna be a busy one. Let's get on the road. It's about an hour and a half to Brands Hatch. Let's go. Exciting laps were done and it was time to get in the car and go for our first laps around Brands Hatch. We tend to park in the paddock away from the garages because it was a really busy day and also doing this means that you can give the car a nice cool down as you go back to the paddock allowing all the brakes etc to go nice and cool. So as you can see here really busy in the garage area drive through the back of the garages, turn right at the end through the metal gate, and then you join the pit lane from the section where other cars are coming in. So you need to be careful, just look right there, make sure no one's entering the pit as you try to get onto it. And we fast forward down the pit lane, Marshall's there, we show them our wristbands so they can see that we're okay to go out and drive, and off we go. Exiting the pits at Brands Hatch can be a little bit awkward, so you need to make sure you keep looking in your left hand mirror as you join the circuit. There will be cars coming up here very fast, and they're going to want to take the line here that you use as you exit the pits, so just be aware. Try not to get in their way. I found this day quite frustrating. There were a lot of cars on the circuit, up to 100 cars there in total, and it was very, very busy. The busiest track day I've ever been on. And it was really hard to get a good lap in. Other drivers were ignoring blue flags quite often. I would try and get over to allow faster cars to pass, and then it would ruin my lap. But here, I moved over to allow a car to pass, and obviously hit the kerb. Really, it was so hard just to try and get any decent times in. The car was good, brakes were not very good, and that's something we definitely need to work out. Getting the power down on some of the corners also was a bit awkward, as you can see here. But nevertheless, the car was very good. It was very quick, and it was very competitive. The sessions keep getting red flags. There's too many cars here today. You just can't get any clear air. People are getting blue flags and ignoring them. Then I'm trying to move over to give people space in faster cars. It's just, um, it's just too busy. Right, so that's the track day over. Unfortunately, I made a mistake with my camera and set it on the wrong setting, so it didn't record a lot of the footage that I tried to get of the uh, Grand Prix circuit. At. And I just want to have a, a bit of a rant, really, because I've been on quite a few track days in the past, 
and various tracks in the UK. Last one was at Snetterton. And this was by far the most busy track that I've ever been on. I reckon there must have been, at one point, possibly a hundred, maybe more cars there today. The organizers need to make sure they get as many cars on there as possible because they need to make as much money as possible. I get that. But the standard of some of the drivers today was absolutely awful. With any track day, you get a mix of abilities and vehicles and you get people driving some slower cars that have got good abilities. You do get people driving faster cars that really don't have very good abilities. All the gear, no idea type thing. Now, there was one example where I was going into a corner. I was, there was nothing behind me. I was approaching a car that was indicating right to go into the pits. I was on my line and in my mirror, I saw a Porsche GT3, I think it was coming up pretty quickly. Now I'm already in the corner at this point, so I'm committed. He comes up behind me and immediately starts to flash me. Well, there's nowhere for me to go. I can't pull right because I'm gonna wipe out the car that's indicated to go into the pits. I can't brake because that would be dangerous. So he has to wait for me to complete the corner so that then I can move over to the right and let him pass, which I would always do because he's in a faster car than me I'm never going to be able to out drag him or beat him on the straight. So I just move over and let him pass because it's a track day, it's not a race. Unfortunately though, some of these people seem to have the attitude that because they've paid for a track day, they can drive pretty much how they like with no consideration to other people on the circuit. And there were a few incidents like that. And I have to say, and it's not a jealousy thing at all, but I have to say, that they t seem to be the people driving the most expensive cars that had the worst driving standards when it came to their aggression, especially in corners. But that aside, the car was good. We got brake problems. Um, they're just not very good. They don't, it, it, the car just doesn't stop like it should do. We did fit a brand new set of EBC yellow stuff pads to it prior to the day and did bed them in as well on the road. Fitting the yellow stuff I think was a big mistake. I have heard that they're just really not suitable now for track usage, but we were pushed for time and it was all I could get for that size of brake caliber. So brakes, brakes definitely need to be looked at. The tires were fantastic. Nankang AR1s. I know they're not the best tire and there are better tires out there obviously, but they were really impressive, loads of grip. The car felt so much better with, all the, with those tires on it. So that was good. The car was reliable, it didn't overheat, nothing broke. We just went out, we do say 15, 20 minute stints, do a cool down lap, drive through to the paddock, let the car cool down nicely, wait 10 minutes and then the next person went out. We did that throughout the day, that was fine. The only other issue as well was because there were so many cars on the circuit, we did have, I think, five red flags in the morning session. One of them was a bit long. It's a bit frustrating because at 550 pounds for the day, you definitely want to try and get your money's worth. Anyway, to summarize, Grand Prix Circuit Brands Hatch. If you've never driven it and you get the opportunity, you really should. It's one of those circuits, it's classic. You know, the Formula One used to race there. It's fast, it's technical in places. Um, there's a few places that can definitely drag you in and spit you out if you're not paying attention. But it's a really good, fun circuit to drive. I am now absolutely exhausted. I've been up since 5.30 this morning. I've been driving the car. It takes a lot of concentration. But as I say, if uh, you get the opportunity, do it. Now my car, that it that you saw, cost me as you saw it so with the engine remap with the engine work the suspension um, basically the whole car ready to go was 2500 pounds which i don't think for a track car that's as competitive as that was i don't think that's a huge amount of money of course for some people it's a lot of money but in track car terms it's not a huge amount of money all I had to do to it once I got it was just service it, uh, change the wheel, wheels and tyres, add the seats, and next on the list is uh, a plan for a roll cage or a half cage. 
but the whole car stands me in about three and a half thousand pounds and it's rapid and it makes all the right noises and it's good fun so it just goes to show that you don't have to spend a hundred thousand pounds to have fun on a track day you can spend a lot less go pretty quick be reliable and most importantly have fun so as always thanks for watching please consider giving this video a like or a thumbs up if you enjoyed it i'm sorry the footage wasn't that great but next time we'll try and get a bit more cheers <laughs>